Maintaining the right level of access is paramount to any security posture, but determining the length of time that access remains is even more so. To help minimize this risk, we're going to use a workflow to suspend users who have been inactive for 14 days. Here's an overview of how to address this problem from a workflow's perspective. First off, to trigger this flow, we're going to create a schedule. This will allow us to schedule this flow during the off hours or in the middle of the day, depending on your desired result. Once we've set up the schedule, we're going to list all the active users from Universal Directory. And for each of these users, we'll need to determine their inactivity criteria, which for this example is 14 days. At this point, we've created a flow to list all the users, and now we need to perform an action for each of these users. To do that, we're going to use a helper flow. A helper flow allows us to take the results from one flow and send them into another flow for further processing. Let's get started. We'll start by creating a new flow. And this new flow's triggering event is a helper flow. Then we're going to use the get multiple function to extract out their last login and their username. Once we have this information, we're going to look at the user's last login date and compare it to today's date. To start this comparison, we first need to get today's date. And we'll do that using the now function. Now that we have their last login and today's date, we need to perform a comparison to determine the difference between the two. And if the difference is more than 14 days, we'll suspend the user. So now that you understand the flow, let's see what it actually looks like in Octa Workflows. We're gonna start by building out that helper flow first. Let's create a new flow. And for this flow, the triggering event will be a helper flow, which receives user information from another flow. So let's type in users here to create the object in this flow. Next, we'll want to get a few attributes about the user. We'll need their last login and their username. To do this, we'll use the get multiple card from the functions list. This will consume the user object from the helper flow. And now let's extract out the last login and username. These are just the attribute names returned from the users. So I'm just pasting that in. Now let's move on to the comparison. We need to compare the user's last login date to today's date. To get today's date, we'll use the now function. We now need to compare the two dates. So to do that, we'll use the difference function. And our comparison will look at today's date and the user's last login date. Based on the results of this comparison, we'll need to make the decision to continue the flow and suspend the user if the difference is greater than 14 days. To do that, we'll use the continue if function. It'll look at the results of the difference card and if it's greater than 14 days, we'll continue the flow to the last step, which is to suspend the user. Let's go ahead and name and save this flow. Now that we have a flow to perform the comparison, let's create a scheduled flow that'll give us that list of users to compare. In the Workflows console, we'll create a new scheduled flow. For this example, we'll run it daily. Now let's get a list of active users. To do that, we'll use the Okta connector and select List Users with Filter. Let's select first 200 matching records and set the status to active. Now we need this to give us the username and last login. And we'll send those results to the helper flow. To do that, we'll select the for each function and take the results of our list users card and send them to our helper flow. Here we can select the helper flow that we just created. Now let's save the flow and we're all set. Workflows offers a powerful automation engine with an easy drag and drop interface and powerful functions. Next up, let's take a look at how you can add in app actions to automate third-party applications such as Box, Slack, or Microsoft 365.